Law Warrior Armor, the Sturmfeuer Heavy Tank. Overview. The Sturmfeuer is the largest missile carrying tank available in the Inner Sphere. Mounting a huge number of long range missile racks, this heavy tank is capable of disabling or destroying any known vehicle. The Sturmfeuer was commissioned by the LCAF, which wanted a vehicle that could support other units without having to worry about being attacked. They also wanted the tank to have indirect fire capability, so that it could fire over obstacles such as hills or trees. The first Sturmfeuer rolled off the assembly line in 3018. It boasted enough missiles to support almost any number of units within range, and a new radar guidance system that guaranteed superior indirect fire capability. Capabilities The Sturmfeuer went through many design changes before the current model became standard. The problem with other designs was that some of the missiles would collide when all were fired at once. Some of the solutions tried were rotary missile packs and vertical launch tubes, but these also suffered from mid-air collision issues. The final solution was a combination of missile fire strips and a new terminal guidance system. One missile rack was mounted facing up and slightly forward in the right and left rear top deck of the tank. The new guidance system launched the missiles straight up and then arced them toward their target. The other missile rack was mounted in the turret, firing on a much flatter arc. This guaranteed that there would be no missile collisions. Mounted coaxially to the turret missiles are a machine gun and the Sturmfire Highlight Tracking Module with Blind Fire Radar Targeting System. The Highlight keeps track of each missile rack's target no matter where it is. The Blind Fire Radar System can track over 200 targets simultaneously and is one of the fastest and most advanced units available. The only complaint Sturmfire crews have is that the vehicle's interior provides the four-man crew with no room to move. Each control seat is mounted on a rack that slides out to the sides of the tank. Once seated, the crewman straps in and slides the chair back into the Sturmfire. This means that the crew cannot move inside the vehicle, though the chairs do swivel to allow access to all of the controls of a particular station. Although the Sturmfire is a heavy tank, it has a remarkably low profile. The missiles are mounted inside the vehicle, with only their exit ports visible. The engine, loading equipment and ammunition is stored between the missiles. The turret is the only external piece of equipment visible on the Sturmfire's box-like chassis. Battle History The Sturmfire is a very new vehicle and hasn't seen much combat. However, there are a few reports of engagements with these tanks against other vehicles invading Steiner's space. The Sturmfire's first combat run occurred on Hesperus II a Steiner planet that still possesses a working mech production facility. The world is heavily guarded to prevent a full-scale attack, but one Marek faction believed that a small group could slip past the heavy defenders, land near the production site, and steal as many mech parts that they could carry. The plan was to jump into the Hesperus system at a non-standard jump point. The jump point that they chose was on the orbital plane opposite from Hesperus II, with the sun between the ship and prying Steiner eyes. The dropship would then power down and wait until the planet had swung around the sun. When operating on low power, the dropship would be all but undetectable to the Steiner defences. Once Hesper swung into position, the dropship would make a low power entry into the upper atmosphere and then land of its small mech raiding force on top of the production sites. The raiding force consisted of four recon mechs, two medium mechs, one heavy, and a few armoured transports. The attack went exactly as planned except the raiders found more Steiner dropships around the planet than usual. In order to avoid detection by the ships, the dropship would be forced to land about 30 kilometers off target. What the raiders didn't realize was that the large amount of dropship activity around Hesperus was due to the arrival of a shipment of Sturmfires to reinforce the defense. Ten minutes after the pirate force landed, the newly landed Sturmfire groups were on their way to their new garrison positions. Moving cautiously and slowly toward the mech production site, the raiders made their way for a mountain range. They went two at a time, which allowed the other mechs to provide covering fire. Fifteen minutes after the first Marek mech made it to the edge of the mountains, a group of six Sturm fires in the upper valley detected them on remote radar sensors. The commander of the unit sped out in the skimmer to find out what was going on, and when he saw the column, he immediately called down fire from his entire unit. The force was sent running back to their dropship minutes after the attack had started. Variants 
The Sturmfire is so new and specialised that there are no variants currently available. It is rumoured that some Sturmfires have been given to House Davian for experimentation, but that several were lost along the way. Notable vehicles and crew, Alan Gilmore. He was the commander of the Sturmfire unit that so effectively drove off the invasion of Hesperus II. Although commended for his quick thinking, he also had to give a five-hour presentation on high-angle missile fire to the Hesperus General Staff. Gillian Haldeman-Smith. Commander Haldeman-Smith is the leader of a newly formed Sturmfire unit in Miller's Marauders. Although many have asked where she got the unavailable Steiner vehicles, her only reply is that she found them behind the baking soda. This is one of the more unique looking vehicles in Battletech. Uh, it's quite cool. I, I like the Sturmfire. It's 85 ton. It's a tracked vehicle with a 255 intercombust power plant, 32 and 54 cruise speed and flank speed, uh, respectively, with armor provided by Protect Tech 6. Its armament is two Sturmfire long range missile launchers and two miniguns. It's manufactured by Trelsha Heavy Industries, and its communication system, a Angst 2100B. Targeting and tracking is from the Sturmfire Highlight with Blind Fire Radar. So it moves 3 and 5, the same as the last two tanks. Uh, it's an ICE engine instead of a fusion engine. Its armour is significant, however. 66 on the front, 66 on the sides, 48 on the rear, and 66 on the turret. This thing is tough. It's thick. It is powerful. And if it gets a chance, it will hurt you. It's basically a tank version of an archer, let's say. It's two LRM-20s, or maybe a tank version of a catapult. Uh, just way more heavily armoured. Uh, two LRM-20s with 18 shots, so like nine rounds of fire in each launcher. Pretty deadly. If you get the hits, that's gonna fucking hurt. All right, the rolls on the you know the number of missiles could be low on most of those, which is like, but it's just the fact that a couple of these things firing you know 40 missiles each is really gonna hurt in the short term, and the thing is so heavily armoured that even if a mech does speed up and get close to it, they're going to have a time trying to, you know, knock this thing out. Granted, vehicles do suffer a bit more on the whole, uh, on the to hit table where they can suffer motive damage, uh, which is probably one of the biggest drawbacks compared to mechs, where, you know, you really have to hit a mech hard or get a lucky crit to cause any kind of mobility damage, whereas vehicles can have tracks blown off, the the, the skimmer uh, fields damaged, uh, that kind of thing. And it can, you know, a, a Sturmfire might not lose its armor, but it could lose all of its mobility, which means the turret can still aim and fire. Uh, what's interesting is the way the weapons are arranged here, despite the fact that one of the missile launchers is actually at the back, as you can see in the artwork, which looks like those weird little, like, pods on the back of the of the vehicle it's actually counted as being front mounted which is odd because the other lrm20 is actually in the turret which you can see in the arrangement there on the uh, the front there with those little pod missiles so i don't know why it isn't suggested that it's actually mounted rear because that is where it is the weapon system i don't know if that's a mistake on their part i'll have to have a look at the record sheet actually and see, you know what, let's let's do this one live. Uh, da, 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 30, 26. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, 30, 26. Uh, <laughs> stick with me here, folks. Uh, da, 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 da. There's a record sheet, 30, 26. Yeah, we've got a few of these. Let's go with this one. Uh, no, that one's not going to be any good, actually. Uh, this one should... Have it, let's see. Uh, oh god, it doesn't have an index. Oh, it doesn't have an index. Oh, we got to scroll all the way down. All the way down. It's alright, we've just got to look for the one that's got the most armour on it on the on the, on the the picture. Ontos? No, I don't want Ontos. No, I don't want Mobile Long Tom. There we go, Sturmfire. Uh, yeah, that's right. Let's see. Uh, weapon is mounted at front. Okay. So, no. Even the record sheet states that it's a front-mounted weapon, even though it's clearly on the back. Uh, whatever, okay. Uh, I, I guess the art was one thing and the write-up was another. There we go. Uh, I do like it, though. It's it's a really nice vehicle. Um, it, it does fall again into that, you know, this is probably cheaper than a catapult or an archer or a longbow, um, as far as, you know, fire support goes. That said, though, catapults are a bit more manoeuvrable, 
archers are generally more maneuverable, and the long tom, which I think is the same weight as this, can fire more missiles. So, yeah, it's a, it's a few drawbacks. Tanks are still very viable in Battletech, though, and still very deadly. So there is that. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool-looking vehicle, Sturmfire. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, so I'll just leave you like that one. I'll just leave you hanging on that one. So uh, have a good one, everybody. Thanks for listening, as always. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.